So hey there fellow YouTubers, it's Frank Bush here again. In today's video, I'm going to look at uh, taking this Type 24 battery box that I have and uh, installing this lithium iron phosphate battery into it and creating a uh, kind of uh, off-grid power system that can handle solar power input and can output USB and uh, 12 volt. And uh, this is going to be a really simple elementary build. You know, there's not a lot of moving parts in this, if you will. So if you're interested in this type of content, stay tuned. So what I'll do is uh, just kind of walk through some of the main components. And then uh, as I move through the video, I'll just do the kind of uh, assembly and install, if you will. So like I say, this is a Type 24 battery box. It's just a simple empty box that you'd set batteries in to kind of protect them from the weather and that type of thing. And uh, it comes with a lid and uh you know fairly elementary and then here i'll just move these to the side for two seconds and uh, what i plan on doing is just simply dropping this battery right into this box if you will and like i say these battery boxes are designed for uh, 12 volt 100 amp per hour normally sealed lead acid but as you can see the uh, lithium iron phosphate fits in there without issue and uh, the thinking really is i've got multiple little adapters here where I've got, this is a 12 volt socket. I've got USB and it takes two outputs, if you will, that'll be at uh, 2.1 amps each. And then I've got a little uh, voltmeter and it'll show what the voltage is of the battery. And then I've got a little um, rocker toggle switch where I'll be able to turn all these different components on and off just off of the single switch. And uh, I'll walk through in the video, this is um, a three-prong connection for DC, which if you're not familiar with these things, I'll walk through exactly how these get installed. Now to save some time in the video, I went and just kind of put together some uh, simple wire connectors. And uh, they're really just little uh, terminals that'll hook into these different components here. And I've wired them together. These are the positive string. And this is the negative string. I just didn't want to show all that on camera because I know it takes up time and I've done that in previous videos. And I'm going to try to make this video fairly uh, rapid, if you will. And then uh, I've got here, I've got a, a PWM solar charge controller. I've got two wires that were just connected onto it. These will connect off to the battery terminals. And then I've got two more wires that uh, I've got to build out the MC4 connectors for that'll feed out and exit this box where you can plug in solar panels. So I'll hook that on shortly. And then I've got, like I say, just the little components that are for creating an MC4 connection to link into solar panels. So I'll walk through that as well. And then I've got this little component here which really when i bought this item this is just a little cheapy 20 dollar item i ordered off ebay that kind of comes with these different components but uh you know and they all kind of come in this kind of construct if you will but needless to say i uh given the layout of this box and how i'm going to set things up i don't plan on using this little uh, plate if you will but the size of the holes will be handy for me to mark the spots when it comes to the top of this box and where I plan on kind of punching the holes through to install those different uh, little components, yeah? So I'll cut angles here and I'll start moving on with the build. First order business I'm gonna to wanna to do is take this uh, PWM charge controller. Now these are cheap charge controllers, but they're also relatively small. And given this compact setup that I'm doing, you know, ideally I would have gone with what they call an MPPT charge controller. They're about 20% more efficient than these, but these are way cheaper. This was only like a $35 unit. And uh, you know, it's more compact for the options that I had available on the market, if you will. And I'll try to show this into the light and get it good and close if, if I can. So really with these, there's a positive and a negative that run off to the battery and then a positive and a negative that connect off to a solar panel. So I already have the connections on where I just put a bit of tape on, you know, the black for negative and the red for positive and that type of thing. But I've got to put on the additional um, solar panel connections with those MC4s I mentioned earlier. And uh, so I'll just do that wiring up as the uh, kind of first step in this process and just get those all set up. And then we'll hook this uh, PWM charge controller up to the battery and get it to kind of stabilize inside the box is the first step. Yeah. All right, so I've just got some 
14 gauge wire here. And I'm using 14 gauge because I don't need a really high level of amps. And uh, the 14 gauge should be able to handle the amperage that I'm pushing through this unit. And, and you know, quite often in previous videos I've shown using 10 gauge. But uh, in this specific setup, uh, the power input and those types of things is going to be a little lower given the fact that I'm using this out in the field. And uh, really it's going to be, uh, I wanted the flexibility of the wiring. You know, the thicker you go with the wires, the more difficult it is to kind of move them around inside tight spaces and all that kind of thing. But uh, really I'm just wanting to take a length of this now that I know will kind of stick out past the end of the box a bit but not quite reach down to the ground. So take about there, say, and I'll just grab my multi-tool, give that a snip. And then I'm just gonna peel this wire into two bits. And my convention, generally speaking, is there's a white uh, kind of paint strip, if you will, that runs down the cable. I generally use that for my negative. So I'll just set that to the side. I'm going to want to take my crimping tool and just clean off the uh, protective sheath of the um, wire a bit. Kind of get the ends ready to connect to the MC4 connections and to the PWM box, yeah? Try to keep my mess to a dull roar over there. I know I always get little bits of spare plastic and other things sitting around my living room and people then complain that they step on them and those types of things, but such is life. <laughs> but uh, either way, I'll just kind of try to clean these up as quick as I can. There, okay, so that gives me two wires to you know, work with, if you will. That wire here. And uh, I'll just shift camera angles and I'll start to kind of get a close-up of connecting up these MC4 connectors so people can see in detail how that's done, yeah? Okay, so with these MC4 connectors, there's kind of an internal bit and an external bit. And then there's genders to them. There's a male and female, if you will. So the internal bits are these little metal components here where you know one goes into the other if you will and uh, generally speaking what ends up happening now is the female connector will go with the male external piece and then the male internal piece will connect to the female connector so under that premise I'm just going to take my wire now and you simply I'm just kind of keep the strands of the wire tight. You simply kind of put that in and set it in nice and nestled in there. And then on my crimper, I'm just gonna crimp down, kind of flatten that a bit. And I only do it kind of gingerly to begin with, just to make sure that I get everything positioned well and all that happiness. And then and crimp it on there really solid so that you know it's not going anywhere. And uh, hopefully the camera is picking that up okay. I might even straighten that little bit out a bit. Just so it's not too bent. But you can see, you just want to kind of really get that onto that wire so you know that it's on there good and snug i'm pulling on it as we speak and i know it's not going anywhere so now with the female external component now you just kind of unscrew off this little back cap and there's a little plastic component here and that'll tighten down on that wire and help make it waterproof if you will yeah but we're going to turn around and take this metal internal component and slide it into the hole that exists here I'm trying to get this on camera the best i can and you'll hear a click when I press it all the way in. Hopefully you picked up the click on the camera there. Now that I know that that's kind of in there and it's stabilized, and if you look at it from the other way, hopefully the camera's getting that. I don't know if the lighting's good enough, but you should be able to see the, you know, internal metal bit inside there now. 
Now all I'm going to do is take the little plastic wire kind of compressing unit that goes over that and slide that on. And I want to have the pointy bits facing kind of away, if you will, because when they slide down, they're going to nest right into the MC4 connector as such. And then you're going to slide over the last little component piece. And that's just going to kind of fit on. And then it's got screws on, or like a threading on there. So I can screw it down. And as I tighten that down, you can see that the inside little rubber bit, if you will, starts to clamp down around that wire and make it that it, it just helps the wire kind of stay waterproof. Now, normally there's a special tool that you can get that kind of sets on these MC4s so that they're on there really tight, but I just use my multi-tool to do it. I can't see justifying, you know, paying an extra $30 for a little simple component like that. But uh, needless to say, that's the female component. The same kind of reality now happens with the male component where I turn around and exact same process. You know, you slide your exposed copper wire in, make sure it's kind of really deep inside there, if you will. And uh, I normally just use my multi-tool. I know you're supposed to use wire crimpers and all that, but I'm just a creature of habit when it comes to these things over the years. So Needless to say, doing the exact same kind of thing. I'm trying not to deform this at all. I want it to be as straight as I possibly can, but I definitely want it to be good and tight onto that wire so it's not going anywhere at all. And you know that that exposed wire has good contact to the kind of internal connector, if you will. And it'll be the exact same thing. I'll just pop off the little cap, pop off the little piece. This should make a click noise. Hopefully you heard the click, come to the other end, just slide on my little rubber piece. Caught one of the threads there. Slide on my plastic threading. And now, oh, of course, every time it's on camera, right? Every time. And like I say, and it goes in that order, right? Where that just nests right down inside there. And then that just threads right on. Really simple. I'll grab my multi-tool to just make sure this thing's clamped down good and tight. There we go. And as you can see, hopefully the camera's catching that, where it's clamped down on that wire pretty good. So now all I have to do really with these two connectors is hook them on to that positive and negative of the solar connectors. So I'll just shift camera angles here, loosen off these threads, and then I'll wire this in and show you that as the next step, yeah? Okay, so now I just wanna connect this, you know, MC4 connectors, if you will. I wanna connect them into this PWM charge controller. So like I say, I've got the solar connectors here. I'll try to get that on a good camera angle. And you can see there's just kind of spaces there. And when I stick the wire in, I screw down that little plate and it just kind of clamps onto the wire. So I've got the positive on the right and the negative on the left. Now, when it comes to the way I've wired up my um, solar panels for my the rest of my setup, I put the female connector onto the positive connection. I'll just double check that that's positive, yeah. Now, I'm gonna wanna just kind of slide that wire in Kind of push it in right into the back so I know that there's going to be lots of connection to that wire. And then I'm just going to take my screwdriver and screw that down. I want to make sure that's on there fairly tight. You don't want to strip screws, you know, giving it too much, but you definitely want to make sure that it's on there with a good solid connection. You know, you've got lots of amps going to be flowing through this from the solar panels. And you want to make sure that, you know, you're not going to cause any shorts or anything else. But uh, really simple. I'm going to do the exact same thing now with this positive connection. And the reason why these are kind of switched is I've got the extensions that come off the solar panel. They're going to be kind of reversed. So even though it's the positive is going into the positive and negative is going into the negative, because I've got extension cables that are running off the uh, solar panels with MC4s on them and stuff, it just causes it that the wires kind of switch, if you will. Hopefully that makes sense, but I just want to slide that one in, make sure it's nested in there really deep, 
and making good solid connection to the metal. Kind of screw that one down and in place. And I want to make sure that's on there. You know, good and snug, like I say. I don't want loose wires just pulling out when I'm out in the field, right? You know, you definitely don't want to have it to the point you're stripping them, but at the same point in time, you want to make sure that those things are on really, you know, substantial, if you will. So they're all good. Give it kind of a tug test. They all seem to be on there really solid. So I'm happy in that regard. I'll flip it over. Now, the thinking is going to be, I'm going to have these two MC4 connectors are going to end up feeding out to the sides. But now at this point in time, all I'm going to do is take my negative and connect it onto the battery here just onto the battery terminal connect that on i just want to make sure everything lights up and it's all good yeah and this i'll end up kind of fine tuning as we go through this process but i'm going to take the uh, positive hook that onto the positive terminal and i just saw that the pwm lit up the charge controller lit up And it's telling me the battery's at 13.4 volts. And you can toggle through different options here. And you have to set the battery type. I've already configured this so that it's set up for lithium iron phosphate. But these charge controllers are designed to handle AGM and sealed lead acid and lithium and those types of things. Yeah, not all charge controllers handle lithium iron phosphate batteries. So if you're looking at picking these up, be mindful of you want a charge controller that is compatible to this chemistry of battery. If you're using the lithium iron phosphates, you know, because you don't want to run into problems where you're under charging your batteries or setting the you know cutoff points at too low of a voltage or any of that kind of business so needless to say that's pretty well about it for wiring up the um, pwm now i'm just going to take the wires and kind of tuck them into the box a little bit when it comes to the ones connected off to the negative and the positive and the ones feeding off i, I gotta straighten that out a bit but uh the ones that'll be feeding off to the solar panels i won't tuck in quite the same because they're going to actually be feeding out through the ports that are connected on the uh, lid of the box as part of the future component of this build if you will so i'll just kind of set those to the side at this point i'll stop and uh all i'm going to end up doing now because i want to do this entire build where i can easily take this apart and put it together if i want to reuse components or if i want to kind of rip it apart and form a larger um double stack battery at home for some other application or da 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 you know endless reasons of why and needless to say i'm not really doing a lot of kind of bolting in the box if you will everything's going to be loose and fairly easy to add or remove but i still want it to be stable enough where i know that it's not going anywhere so when it comes to this PWM charge controller, I'm simply going to end up taping this down to kind of brace it to the battery and using some two-sided tape along these edges here to kind of make sure it holds in place so it's not joggling around, you know, if I'm out in the field with it and that kind of thing, yeah? But uh, I'll stop here. I'll shift camera angles and kind of move on, yep. Yeah. Got a bit of two-sided tape here. And I don't plan on using a huge amount of this. It's really just to stabilize this thing so it's not bouncing around too much in here, yeah? But uh, I'm just going to take my multi-tool and cut off a small piece of this um, two-sided tape. I'm actually going to need two of them, if you will. About that long or so. That'll be good enough. I'll just set that on to there. Another piece, about the same. Like I can say this is all just kind of, you know, really easy going, not exact measurements or any of that shenanigans, right? I try to make a lot of my projects where it is flexible and easy to kind of modify and change as if you uh, need to do adjustments as you move through time, right? So needless to say, kind of put on that two-sided tape now. Just peel off the uh, back piece. If I can get my fingernailless little fingers to peel that off, okay. 
I knew I shouldn't clip my nails. It happens all the time. There we go. Now, like I said, I really want to kind of keep this to this side of the box. And I want it to be centered in between the two terminals. That looks like about a good spot. Gonna push that down. That looks pretty kosher to me. And then uh, kind of turn out the connectors so that they're kind of set to the sides and out of the way. Now the only thing I've really got now is these two MC4 connectors that'll feed out through openings in the box to be able to plug in solar panels. And now that charge controller, and like I say, it's not on there rock solid, but it's on there enough where, you know, kind of give it a good press down to make sure it's that two-sided tape is holding. But now I know that that's not really going to move around. Like I'm trying to wiggle it with my finger here and I'm moving almost the entire box, yeah? So like I say, that's good enough to kind of hold that in place. And now I just want to slide the battery that way in the box, if you will. And the reason why is I've got this little piece of wood. Incidentally, just had it in my garage where I'm going to slide that down in and that's just going to be a spacer for the battery to make sure that the battery's not wiggling around when I'm out in the field either. Like I said, I didn't want to strap it down. I didn't want to strap any of the stuff down. I wanted it all to be really easy and real flexible. So that's kind of it now for the main component of the battery's, you know, main body, if you will. The easy part's been done. And like I say, these MC4s will just kind of feed off and out to the sides. And that's where I'll plug in my solar panels. Now, I'm going to move on to the battery case. And I'll just try to show that to you now. Of the MC4s kind of sticking out the sides, if you will. Let me kind of... Come on now. Kitchen on the wire there. So as you can see, it all just kind of sets into place pretty easily. Now there's strapping that'll go on this battery box that'll kind of clamp this and lock it down so it's not moving anywhere, yeah? And I'll kind of shift angles here. Let me see. I'll shift angles just to show you of, if you're not seeing it already. Of, I've just got the MC4 connectors. They'll just feed out through little side openings that exist in this battery box. And it'll be the same on the other side. Where, you know, they're not long enough to be touching the ground or anything. And potentially I might even go and shorten up those wires a little bit. Just so that they're not quite as long. And, uh, because really they're hanging a little long. But, uh, just have it where they hang out and you can connect your solar panels into that easily enough, yeah? So let me kind of shift camera angles. And now we're gonna look on moving on to the next step, which will be um, wiring in all those components that I talked about earlier, all the, you know, 12 volt cigarette lighter plugins and the USBs and all that kind of stuff, yeah? Okay, and so just so you're aware, I had to move this PWM charge controller um, in towards the center about half an inch because the slope of the box was causing it to be just too tight where it was catching on this edge here. So, you know, minor issue, but needless to say, kind of set that back on and uh, that'll all just sit as such. So the thinking now really is, and I'll mention there's some air holes in here and that's normally for when you're using sealed lead acid because they need to have vent holes to breathe to let off um, toxic gases and those types of things. When you're using uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries, you don't have to worry about that. So in order to weatherproof this box a little bit more, I'll end up taking some um, silicone and kind of sealing over these holes to stop the uh, water ingress from getting inside the box, yeah? But now, like I was saying, I want to start to hook on these different kind of components that I have here. And I'll just pull them back up, if you will. So I want to start to kind of hook these bad boys into the box. But, I, you know, I was supplied with this. But because I've got the strapping that's going to kind of sit on this box and kind of bring everything together. In fact, I'll just move those for now. We don't really need them up there. Because the strapping is going to kind of sit on the box as such and clamp everything shut. 
to make sure that you know nothing's getting to the inside and when it comes to laying this four piece component on top I can't really get away with that without the strapping getting in the way so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two on the one side and I'm going to put two over on this side and just have it where you know the cigarette lighter and the USB are here and the voltmeter and the power are here that kind of setup yeah so I'm going to use this plate though for the sizing of the holes just to be a place marker to determine kind of where on the box I want to have those sitting and how big the hole should be so I'll shift camera angles here and just show you kind of a little trick that I use to make it that um, I can mark onto surfaces like this to know exactly where the position of things are with ease yeah okay so I've just kind of shifted the angle of the lid so it's sitting in my lap and I want to have these holes you know this thing could easily sit flush down a little bit but because of these uh, the length of these connectors and how they're going to sit on the inside of this box yeah you know, see if I can shift the camera to kind of give that better justice but um you know when these are kind of sitting on the box flush they stick into the box a fair bit and I want to make sure that the wiring connections doesn't really go below this line because that's where the top of the battery is going to be on the battery box so when it comes to connecting these on now let me slide this back this way again so when it comes to connecting these on now I want to kind of move away from that a bit and move up towards the top of the box bore and I've got like a little cheater trick that I do when it comes to these types of things that really I kind of got out of my fly fishing fly tying abilities when I was young I used to tie flies but uh, needless to say I kind of line that up so it's straight and everything but I'm using a little bit of nail polish now you know raid the wife's nail box if you can and I want to make sure that the curve of this box isn't going to be in the way of the outside edge of here but what I'm going to want to do is when it looks like everything's kind of flush and where I want it to be I'm just going to paint inside that along the outside edge now I know that this cutout is one and an eighth inch 29 millimeters for the metric people in the world but this will tell me now where my hole is going to be with ease so when it comes to drilling my hole which I'll end up doing in a minute I'll just dip this again hold on yeah when it comes to drilling my hole using the nail polish just I find to be a good little cheat to kind of really help show me where I'm going to be drilling without having to you know commit to pilot holes and all that kind of stuff too early in the game so and really I'm just going right along the outside edge of that hole to make sure I know where the perimeter is going to be and I'll lift that off and that should be good enough at this point I'll just set that to the side so I'm going to end up doing the same thing on this side so I can see where the placement of the holes will be I'll see if I can shift the camera angle to show you how well that stands out like I say it's I've got a little bit on there so let me just get that off the box before it dries so hopefully the camera is able to see that with you know justifiable light to it if you will let me see yeah the camera should be able to pick that up pretty easy I'll let that dry but that'll tell me with clear definition where I'm going to be putting my set drill to drill those holes and I can see now given the space of where they're at when it comes to laying on my strapping I should be able to connect the strapping through uh, let me adjust this camera a little bit it's trying to use the sunlight to really make that red stand out but you can see I should be able to have the strapping now sit there without getting in the way of those holes so that this can lock down this battery box without any issues yeah so like I say I'll go and put the other two holes on the other side of where they're going to be and then uh, I'll let it dry for a few minutes and then we'll get on to just drilling those holes so like I say just using a bit of trusty hard as nails nail polish you know, cheapy stuff from the uh 
on good old Dollar Tree, if you will. But uh, it serves its purpose. And uh, like I say, that looks like about the right position. I'll do the same on this hole now. And the next over. And you just need enough to really see where the space is going to be, right? Anything more than that, you're getting an overkill country. And as you can see, those four spots now are clearly marked out. Hopefully the camera's picking that up okay. Yeah, you can see those spots will be easy now. And I've got a drill bit that I'll just grab it. I think it's right behind me here. So I've got this, what they call step drills, and it's really designed to drill variable sized holes. So this component here, this drill bit, it can go all the way from a quarter inch right up to one and three eighths. I only need to go to the one and one eighth inch hole sizing to be compatible to exactly match up to the holes that i'm going to be setting in yeah so and that's one of the reasons why i kind of did these red marks now and when i go to drill this in i will put in some pilot holes in the centers of these and then when i drill these in i'll see that as soon as i come up to the edge of the uh nail polish i know and once i kind of see in the reading that i'm hitting the one and one eighth inch you know, uh, size of bit, if you will. Once I get to that point, it should be perfectly sized so that I can just drop these components into the box without issue, yeah? So like I say, I'll let this nail polish dry for a couple minutes and uh, I'll uh, come back when I'm ready to start drilling. Okay, so I just moved over onto my hardwood floor here just so I could keep the little plastic shards mess to a dull roar. Now I'm just gonna wanna set a pilot hole in to begin with. to kind of give these units you know the the larger drill bit of place to run if you will I'm trying to line this up as close to center as I possibly can you know, it might not be an exact science okay Within reason, that looks pretty good. Now I'm just going to switch out my drill bit and move up to the uh, step bit here. In fact, I think those two look pretty good, but this one looks a little low. In fact, I'm just going to tweak that because, you know, might as well while I'm here. I think that could be just a tiny bit higher. Yeah, that looks better. Okay. Like I say, this isn't... If you've watched previous videos of mine, you know I'm not a exact measurements kind of guy. I'm just, let's get it done. <laughs> but, uh, either way, I still want to have things, you know, within reason in good alignment. So I'm just going to set onto that pilot hole now. As you can see, it wants to jump a bit, yeah? So you don't really want to put much weight on this at all to begin with. Just let the bit do the work. And not 100%, but I think we might be there on that one. And like I say, there's little plastic shards here. Hold on, let me see little plastic shards all over the place so doing it on the hardwood was the right call i'm just going to go and grab one of those little units and see that um if i'm at, at the size here where it's fitting or not and i'll push it through and make it a little larger if it doesn't yeah just give me two seconds okay so like i say i just kind of took the back ring off if you will and now i'll just kind of check uh, 
Yeah, that's still a little bit too small. Fair enough. That should be the size now. I'll clean up all these plastic fragments here in a second, but yeah, now that should, and it does, kind of press down into there pretty good. So I won't put that in because, not right away anyways, I want to take a smaller bit and kind of clean up any rough edges and stuff just to smooth out the uh, surface of this stuff, yeah? So I'm just going to walk through on to the next one now. Same premise as before. I don't want to press hard. And as you press down, you'll feel it kind of step. Yeah, that one's a little bit lower. But we're not quite there. So hopefully that'll straighten out. As you can see, not quite there. So now. one hopefully yeah that's the size now it needs to be and like I say these edges that exist here still hang over by almost a quarter inch so they'll cover any type of indiscrepancies and stuff that go on you know within reason but uh, like I say I'll go off and do the next two holes here I won't bother recording that I'll just cut back when I go to clean up these holes and the little piece I use to do that yeah okay so I got the four holes drilled Hopefully you guys can see that. It's got fairly good alignment and that kind of thing. And uh, just gonna push all the little plastic fragments together in a pile to keep the mess to a dull roar. And then now I've just got this little you know, Dremel sander bit, if you will, that uh, I'm just gonna use in my drill. Oh. Now the thinking really is, I'm just going to kind of walk across each one of the holes in this now and just kind of give it a bit of a run around the outside edge. I don't want to do this too much because I definitely don't want to make the holes much bigger than what they are. But just to kind of clean off any little hanging bits if you will. Just helps quickly and easily clean them up. And really, it's just that simple. I'm not overly worried about the inside. I mean, I'll pick off any of the big bits, but uh, I'm not overly worried about the inside too much because it's never going to be seen, if you will. And when it comes to this outside now, like I say, I'll just grab these little components here. Now, the thinking really is going to be this bit. Hopefully, I'm catching this on camera half decent. So, my power switch. Is just going to perfectly fit into that hole and it's a good tight fit which is what I wanted it to be and kind of set that in and as you can see hopefully the camera's catching that I'll try to get it on a different angle here hopefully the camera's seeing I just want to kind of align that so that you know the switch is in a good place for up and down position and that kind of thing so you know aesthetically it looks pleasing and I'm just gonna on the back side now I'm just going to take my the little screw ring, if you will, and just screw that on and just brace that down. And uh, I think I've got to go and clean up a little piece of plastic here. So I'll go and do that off camera. But that's really the thinking is you just want to kind of screw and lock these on. And then this is kind of now set onto that box and it looks nice and clean and professional. And like I say, it won't go anywhere. Once I know that it's been tightly screwed on the back end, if you will. I just get little tiny pieces of plastic that are getting in the way of screwing that down. So I'll just pop that back out. And like I say, it's in there nice and tight, which is exactly what I want it to be, right? Of, and kind of pop that back out and uh, clean up that little 
hopefully the camera's picking that up, but I got a little tiny plastic edges here. I just got to take those off. I can even take that off. I just got to take those off because they're getting in the way of screwing down the little, you know, ring piece, if you will. So I'll go and do that. I'll do that off camera and uh, I'll cut back once I kind of have those things going. Yeah. Okay. So I cleaned up the mess and really all I had to do is on the inside here, there's some um, plastic little ribbings that were catching where it was holding on to the uh, kind of ring part of the, you know, where it screws on. But uh, needless to say, it's time to start kind of pushing these components in now. Let's see if I can catch this on camera, right? And this is really, like I said, a elementary process. I simply just push those components. In fact, I want that turned the other way so it's facing up. And just push it all the way in so it's flush. And then that looks okay. And then like I say, on the inside, I know the lighting's getting dimmer. I've got to get some additional lighting. But uh, now before I tighten that too far, just make sure, do a double check that that's all aligned really nicely, which it is. Now I just want to really kind of crank down on that, make sure it's good and locked on there. So I know it's not going anywhere. That seems to be on there really firm now. And like I say, I've got my three terminal connections that are sitting on the back here. And we'll talk about that as soon as we go to wire things up. But uh, for the next one, I'll do the exact same thing now for each one of the four of these. In fact, I'll kind of shift that back a bit just to catch it on a bit of an angle. So I've got a bit of room to work there. Hopefully that works better. Exact same thing again. Push that on. Make sure it's aimed, you know, in the right angle and all that happiness. Seems okay. And before I go on too tight, just make sure it's not exactly where I want it to be. Seems okay right there. still shimmy in a bit there we go a little bit tighter that seems okay get shot on the camera so hopefully you can see it's starting to give a nice clean professional look to it and then like i say i'll have enough space now for the strapping to go here now i'll just put in the USB, you kind of turn the camera a bit, put in the uh, USB one next. Now the USB one, these ones are waterproof, just so you're aware of these pieces here. And these have little waterproof covers. So I just want to kind of make sure that the waterproof component of things is all where I want it to be. And that seems to be okay. So that will step in there because I want to have all the numbers facing upwards. You see that looks like a good position. Flip it over. Now you could put a little bit of Loctite or something on these. I don't really think it's necessary, but you know, it is doable in that regard of if you felt so inclined. Okay. It's mm. really hard to start to turn. There we go. All right. So now the USB one's in there. And I'll just put in the 12 volt connector. And then like I say, these got these little kind of waterproof caps now to go over them to protect them for when I'm out in the field. So I don't get moisture into things, right? And that's a lot of what it is. I try to stop a lot of the moisture from getting me into my gear when I'm out in the field. Okay, so now this one, I want to have the verbiage facing that way. That seems 
pretty right. Same thing again. Like I say, as soon as we get these on, I'll shift camera angles. I'll see if I can get some better lighting because I know, like I said, I know it is kind of getting darker now. And uh, before that gets too tight. Like that, as such. There we go. All right, that's on there and that's not going anywhere. And of course, the little rubber piece was just a little bit off. <laughs> so, needless to say, hopefully the lighting's still good enough to see that. I mean, look at the camera here, kind of see. But as you can see, gives kind of a nice, clean, professional look, if you will, where, like I say, I got my 12 volts, my USB connections, my voltmeter, and my power switch, yeah? So like I say, I'll see if I can improve the lighting situation, and I'll, I'll uh, switch camera angles, and we'll do the wiring up and get this hooked up to the battery so we can start using that, yeah? Okay, so I just grabbed a... Bit of extra lighting, I know it's not the best lighting either, but such is life, right? So needless to say, I did adjust these little rubber flaps. I didn't like how they were sitting on the bottom. Move them to the top and that way, you know, they work with gravity instead of against it and that kind of thing, right? But, uh, you know, you get your 12 volt, your USB will have the voltage and DC will light up here and then the on off button here, right? And then these will all light up with uh, a blue lighting once they kind of get power thrown to them. So we'll move on to that as the next step. I'll have to take a bit of nail polish remover and remove that one little spot. But you can see where I did the nail polish earlier to kind of get an idea where the placement would be. None of that is visible now. It all has a really kind of clean professional look, if you will, of... You know, it is what I wanted to see is kind of the end result. So I'm happy in that regard. The next step is, uh, like I say, wiring it up to the battery. And that's a relatively elementary process. I'll walk through the details of that. And then uh, this thing should be fully functioning and ready to use in the field, yeah? All right, so now let's get into the wiring is kind of the next stage, yeah? So what I have here is, this will be my positive line because we've got these four things and we want to hook them all up to the rocker switch if you will there's really just four terminal connectors they're the blue terminal connectors and i've got four of them hooked in series on the line i know i'm not doing the best camera angles here but i've got four of them just hooked in series on the line and the thinking really is on this rocker switch i'll come up and see if i can get in close here on this rocker switch the middle connection is going to be a positive line that goes out to the battery. The darker colored of the two is going to be your negative. And the other one opposite that is going to be your positive that's running this series. So the thinking really is I'm going to take my positives and I'm just going to daisy chain connect those along. So like I say, I want to connect my positive connection straight to the rocker switch on the positive that's going to daisy chain then i'm going to move to each positive now in the line so that one's the positive that one's the negative so i'll connect that one and when it comes to these connections they're just push on i'm really trying to give decent camera but they just push on and make sure they're kind of all the way on nice and firm and now this they've got like i say Little positives and negatives marked on them so it's easy enough to know which one's which yeah oh I, I hooked the wrong one on hold on sorry about that i want to connect the positive to the positive the positive to the positive now on here the positive goes to the positive so it's really simple really and then this was just me splicing a line together to make sure I had the length. And then the last positive, I'll just confirm. Yeah, that's the positive, the positive. And you always want to kind of double check all these things to make sure that, see, and I don't like that. That's on a, a little loose. So there we go. 
Yeah, I'll have to tighten that one a bit. It's just a little bit of a loose connection. I don't like that. Oh, oh there we go. There we go. All right, so as you can see, all the positives are just connected together, yeah? Really elementary. Now the negatives are gonna have the same kind of thing, but the only difference now is, like I say, I've got four of these sitting in series where I've got the one, two, three, and four. And now I'm gonna go off to a negative terminal, which is gonna connect off to the battery. So I'll turn around and hook all my negatives on now. So like I said, put the negative on, the next one to the negative. And if you find any of those terminals are loose, like that one terminal is a little loose, what I'll do is go back and just take a pair of pliers and give it a bit of a clamp to make sure that they take a bit of effort to kind of clip on, yeah? And now the last black negative connects on to there. And now I've got my line going off to the negative that'll connect onto the negative of the battery, yeah? And now, like I said, that positive that sat in the middle here, that's gonna be the one that connects on to the battery. This is on the rocker switch now. So I've got the positive connector here. In here, I put an inline fuse. So this whole line has this fuse and on it, I put a, sorry, it's on there pretty tight, but on it, I just put, come on now. Uh, a little 15 amp fuse and that should be enough to run the loads of running anything on my cigarette socket at the same time as I'm running full loads on the USB this should be able to handle that within reason yeah so needless to say I could switch this up to a 20 amp fuse I might if I see that this one starts popping but we'll see as we go now all this really does is just connect on to that middle rocker switch terminal. And now you can see all three of those terminals are connected on now for the rocker switch. And now there's my positive that'll connect to the battery and there's my negative that'll connect to the battery. And the good part is because this is all just kind of built into the lid it's easy enough for me if I want to pop off the batteries and replace things or anything else. It's easy enough to do that without any significant issues at all, yeah? But uh, I'll shift the camera angles here and we'll wire this up to the actual terminals on the battery. And uh, we'll strap it down and this will be a completed build. We'll flip it on and we'll see how it performs, yeah? Okay, and now like I say, just kind of move my lid so that it was sitting in the back side of things just to make it easier to kind of get at the wires of stuff. And I'm simply going to connect my positive that came off of the circuit we just put together. I'm going to connect the positive onto there. And the negative that, the line for the negative that came off, I'm going to do the same for the connection for there. Make sure I'm getting this on camera. Yeah, we're doing all right. Sometimes I get caught up in what I'm doing and I don't get the best camera work and I'm trying to improve that over the years, but such is life. So it's really, you know, that simple. So now I've got it where I'm just going to move that MC4 connector to the inside and that to the inside. In fact, I'll just set that there for right now. And that seems to be all good. All I need to do now is bust out my multi-tool and tighten down these terminals a bit. I always like to make sure everything's on there good and tight, if you will. Especially when it comes to terminal connections with the battery. 
when you know this is kind of the highest point where the amps are going to be flowing, if you will, you always want to be mindful of trying to uh, trying to get these to be, you know, secure as possible. You definitely don't want to have loose connections at the battery terminal point. You know, you get sparks and you can blow things out and da da da. But uh, now we've got, like I say, hopefully the cameras seeing that i got just the two wires going off connecting to the lid so it makes it really easy to pop this lid on and off and these wires will just end up getting tucked to the inside of the body it'll all end up laying flat oh bumping the camera and it'll be pretty well as such i just need to get my mc4 connector back and it'll be as such now, before I go putting on the strap, let's just make sure that that all lights up. So hopefully the camera's picking that up. Got the power indicator light came on. Tells me the voltage is at 3.3. My USB is lit up. And I know that all of these are connected now. And I can easily just toggle these off of this circuit. I'll switch angles and give a close up to show you what they look like. But really, the only thing I have left now is just to make sure that this lid is kind of strapped onto the battery so everything's kind of strapped down, if you will. So the wires make it want to push up a bit, if you will, yeah? So like I say, these batteries normally come with, you know, standard straps to kind of keep everything grounded. So what I'll do is I'll just shift the camera angle and, uh, I'll slide the strap underneath and that type of thing and uh, just get the strap braced on and then I'll do a close-up of this and we'll plug it in and start to test to make sure we can take loads, yeah? On these different uh, inputs or outputs, I should say. All right, so like I say, I just put the strapping on. As you can see, it kind of sits in the middle here nicely and I just tied up the end. It looks like a bit of an eyesore where I did the tying there, but just wanted to make it where it was nice and secure and everything was good in that regard, yeah? I'll kind of pull back and show you of, like I say, so now this battery box kind of has some advanced functionality to it where, like I say, then kick it on and get a good reading on the voltage and stuff. Like I say, the lights up for the 5 volts, 2.1 amp, 5 volt, 2.1 amp. And there is no lighting up on the 12 volt cigarette socket adapter, if you will. But uh, it's one of those things where I can easily just close up those side to make sure that, you know, no rain or any of that business is getting into them at all. And uh, these components here are waterproof, so I'm not worried about them in that regard. And uh, for the next step, like I say, I'll just kind of step that back a bit, pop the angle up. So as you can see, there's not much change to the overall battery box, if you will. It just gives this entire added level of functionality now. And like I say, when it comes to the um, solar connectors, I'll probably shorten these cables, but I've just got cables hanging out on this side and the same on the other where I've just got those MC4 connectors now that I can easily hook onto a solar panel when I'm out in the field to give it a charge. So the good part about this little unit of when I'm out in the field, I don't normally rely too heavily on AC power, generally speaking, and I'll show how I can kind of easily get some improv AC power. But normally I'm looking to charge up USB based devices like my cell phone and and lights and those types of things. And if you've watched previous videos of mine, I tend to prefer 12 volts um, cooking equipment over uh, AC powered like I, I prefer DZ powered 12 volt cooking equipment over AC power so if you're wondering kind of why I'm of that mindset if you want to go back and watch um, the previous video I did about um, off-grid cooking and that I kind of walk through that in full detail but either way I'll grab a few different devices and uh, we'll plug in some components and start to throw charge into things and uh, we'll make sure that we're able to pull them maximum amount that this unit's gonna output without popping any fuses or anything so i'll do that as the next step yeah i'll just turn it off for two seconds and you can see simple unit yeah so yeah like i say let me go grab a few bits and bobs and i'll come back yep 
All right, so first order business. I'm just gonna test my USB capabilities, make sure that they're all fully functioning. So I'll just plug into the outlet. There you go. That seems to be charging without issue. And then it uh, didn't even throw the slow charging alert. So it tells me that it's going through in a half decent rate. And then I'll plug in to the other USB, pull off both of them at the same time. And now I'll plug in my tablet, which normally consumes more energy. So it's taking a charge at the same time as the phone is. Charging at 97%, charging at 94%. So you can see I'm easily able to charge my phone and my uh, tablet at the same time without any issues. So that's always a good sign. And uh, so I know that the USB is functioning. So I'll just leave those plugged in and charging. I'll shift camera angles. I'll go grab one of my 12 volt cookers that I have shown in the previous video. I'll grab my little mini oven that I used in my uh, urban truck camping video in one of the previous videos. And uh, I'll, I'll hook that up and then I'll grab my temperature gun to show that we're getting current flowing through that too, yeah? So two seconds. Okay, and if you've seen previous videos of mine, you'll have seen this 12 volt Road Pro cooker that I've used in previous videos. Now I don't have any food in that, but that's okay. I'm just gonna plug into my cigarette lighter adapter now at the same time, and I'll just pop this open. Now, I can already feel the, there's a heating element right in the middle of this. It normally takes a minute to come up to speed. So I'll just let that kind of warm up to show you that it's well above, you know, room temperature, my body temperature, or any of that business. So I'm already at 43.9 degrees Celsius, 111 Fahrenheit. We're up to 132 Fahrenheit, 55.7 Celsius. So you can see now that this oven cooker, I can use that at the same point in time as I'm charging different devices like my cell phone, tablet, or potentially I could be running a lighting system and those types of things, yeah? So this is kind of a good setup in that regard of, let's just see, we'll take one more reading of that. So I'm already up to 76.8 degrees Celsius. 170 degrees Fahrenheit, you know, so this thing's working. I'm not popping any load on the fuses or anything at this point in time. So that's always a good sign. And uh, on the battery, I'll see if I can, I'm on a tripod here, so it's a little tricky, but on the battery to show you the voltage drop with all those loads plugged in, <clears throat> I'll see if I can get that on the camera. Hopefully the camera's catching that. I can't really, here, let me, I'm trying to improv things on the fly. But uh, normally what happens when you start putting load on the batteries, the voltage drops. And generally speaking, if the voltage drops below, you know, about 11.8 or so, 11.5, you start having problems. But uh, hopefully you can see that I'm still sitting at 12.6 volts. Now that's running 120 watts off of this oven, which is now up to 232 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, 114 degrees Celsius. So you can see this little 12 volt oven is definitely producing the heat without blowing any fuses or any of that business. And like I say, both my tablet, which is really a high amp draw device, and my cell phone are both USB-C and I'm pulling ample amounts of power off them too. And I'm still not popping any fuses. Now I can run this setup with all of these things running at the same time to give you an idea um, I can run that for about eight or nine hours non-stop you know obviously I'm not going to be cooking food non-stop for that length of time so it shows you that you know even without having to plug in and um, to the solar panels and kind of fill the batteries back up again that I can go extended periods of days if you will where I can cook off a meal or two a day you can see the voltage is even starting to bounce back and that's really as this um, oven has come up to temperature now the power demand on it is starting to drop a bit 
<clears throat> but I'll unplug it because, like I say, there's no sense in wasting the power. And you can see instantly it jumped back up to 13.1. But uh, like I say, if I throw this in the back of the truck, I can have it where if I'm gone for, say, you know, three or four days, even if I'm not using the solar panel, I'm normally able to cook off, you know, a meal a day uh, inside this cooker and uh, be able to um, power my devices and run lights, you know, for the better part of a couple days before I have to do a recharge. And so there's one or two other little items I'll show in this video and then I'll start to wrap it up. But uh, as you can see, really simple build. There's not much to it. It's easy enough for me if I want to kind of take this all apart and remove any of these components, I can have this all disassembled within like half an hour, half an hour, an hour's time. It's really not a complex build in that regard. I tried to show this to be as simple as possible, you know? I think the only thing I really used was what? A drill and some um, wire snippers and, and crimpers. You know, there, there definitely isn't any kind of advanced tools in building this stuff out. And the knowledge of it is fairly elementary for what's needed to be done. I plan on doing, just as you guys, so you guys know, I should say, I plan on doing two more future videos in the near term of building out similar types of things to this, but uh, using a ammo cans and, uh, you know, small and large ammo cans. I plan on doing two other additional videos with a small ammo can, which is purely going to be a USB driven device that has the capacity of 320 watts where I can use it out in the field to run lighting systems for days and days and days before I have to recharge it. And then I plan on building... Uh, a uh, similar unit to this into a larger ammo can, but it is also going to incorporate um, larger volumes of um, AC power as well. So, and uh, potentially I'll have it where you can plug into the wall, you can pull from a solar panel, you can go out to DC or AC, cigarette lighters, USB, all that kind of stuff, and just have it where it's not quite as powerful. That unit's only going to be about 256 watts, but it's got a handle on it that I can just pick it up, take it, and go. You know, throw out in my vehicle and off I go into the backcountry and it's full waterproof and everything else so I can definitely use that in rugged environments and not be overly concerned about you know the the circuitry or any of that stuff being compromised yeah so needless to say I'll stop ranting here and uh, I'll just grab my other two components I wanted to kind of quickly discuss with this unit and then I'll start to wrap the video up yep so like I say one of the one or two of the last things I want to kind of show you is you know, there's lots of trinkets in the market today that work with cigarette lighter adapters. And this gives me additional USBs if I want to have four plugs. You know, these two on here are 2.1 amp. And then I've got a 2.1 amp on here and a 1 amp. So I can easily plug this into this cigarette lighter outlet as well. And now I'm up to having four USB plugs, you know, really easily if I want to run you know charging a couple devices and be able to run a lighting system in the nighttime you know I can easily plug in uh, a three to five uh, watt LED light off of this um, input on the bottom and the one on the top is even more powerful right so needless to say I can run full lighting systems while I was you know powering tablets and devices as well and there's also other you know and these things are cheap this is what a five ten dollar unit you know they're they're definitely not high cost units and I can throw this into the bag that I'm taking with me and then just have it as you know an extra feature to this battery box if you will and there's also these things and I like these these are really you know they're fairly inexpensive these are like 20 30 dollar units but it's a cigarette lighter plug-in adapter that will give me small scale ac power and give me an additional usb at the same time so i can easily plug this in as well and hopefully the camera saw it and get a little green light lights up lets me know that this is running where i could plug in you know shavers and those types of things or have the additional usb that sits on here and i believe this one's only a one amp as well so like i said i could run a three to five watt light bulb off here but potentially i could plug in shavers and other small electronic devices that were requiring ac power if i needed you know and and have that option you know as part of this setup and like i say this one's only 75 watts so it's not a high powered you know unit in in any regard but i mean it fits in the palm of my hand right 
So it's one of those things of, generally speaking, I tend to rely, like I say, more on 12 volt and USB based technologies when I'm out in the field. But having this, you know, along, if I bring my shavers and those types of things, I can have a shave and I'm out in the middle of the backcountry without an issue and that kind of stuff, right? So needless to say, I'll kind of wrap the video up at this point in time because we're getting too late in the day to test the PWM charge controller, but I was just using that charge controller in a different project that I never recorded. I was just using that like two or three days ago, and I know that that's working without issue. But uh, tomorrow, if the weather's half decent, I'll drag this out and plug in the uh, MC4 wires so that I can go off to a solar panel. And the maximum input is um, 20 amps that I can feed in off of the um, solar panel into here so you know I can charge this thing at a fairly significant rate you're talking maybe about 350 watts worth of power that I can stick in here an hour off of the solar panels. You know, uh, if you've watched previous videos of mine, I've got two foldable solar panels that I've used together in parallel when I've used them for doing a battery list system where I didn't have any batteries involved at all. I was just running purely off the solar. And, um, I can easily use that level of solar panels wired into this and fed into that um, um, MC4 connection and have it that from dead to full, I can have this battery charged in roughly about six to eight hours maybe maybe closer to eight re realistically maybe closer to eight but either way within a single day i can have this thing from dead to full you know on a single half decent day and if i'm conservative with my power use i can have this thing last three four five days if I'm cooking a meal a day and powering lights and those types of things, and if I'm not really relying on this to cook much and just using it to run lighting and power my devices, I could have this thing last for weeks before I'd have to, you know, plug it into the solar panel again. And uh, like I say, I, I just kind of like the aspect of, I can just pick this up now and go with it. It's got handles on the sides, right? It's just a battery box. There's, like I say, commonly available on the market. But uh, I'll wrap the video up at this point in time. This really was just to be a simple build that if you're not savvy with electrical stuff, you can order these little flush mount systems. Um, I think it was called a four in one flush mount system. I got off eBay for, I think it was about 16, $17, you know, and then the shipping was another two or three. So for 20 bucks, it gave me this level of functionality, you know, a bit of wiring and those types of things added into it. And then the uh, PWM solar charge controller was about another 35 the connectors and that kind of stuff, you know, all in all, other than the battery itself, to build out this whole box is is less than a hundred dollar build, if you will. I got this box for 10 bucks. You know, the really expensive part about any of this was the battery. I, uh, I really stick to lithium iron phosphate batteries. I tend to see those as really the only option that I use because of the level of capacity in that, but they are pricier. That battery that's sitting in there, um, it's, uh, uh, when I bought it, it was about $450. And so, you know, it's a little on the pricier side, but I'm expecting that the life of that battery now, as long as I'm not keeping this in below freezing conditions and trying to charge, that's one of the only limits on this. I know I rant, sorry guys. And that's one of the only limits on this battery technology. You can't charge it off the MC4s if the temperature goes below freezing. You know, you can pay additional and get batteries that have heating elements in there, or I could wire up some mechanisms that heat the inside of this box to allow it to go down below freezing and still take solar charge. But in the climate I'm in, the level of below freezing days that we have is minimal at best. I'm lucky if I see one or two of those a year that I'd be out in the field with this. So it's not a high priority to me, but... The one good part about the battery technology I'm using, well, there's a couple really good parts, is that I can use 100% of the capacity of the battery. So, you know, this solar generator now is 1,280 watts of capacity that it can store and use. That's a lot of power, you know? And when it comes to the cycle life, I can cycle these batteries um, about 4,000 times before the battery capacity gets down to about 80%. So this could easily last me, if I baby this and look after it well, this could easily last me until I'm dead. You know, I'm in my mid-40s now. Of In another 20 years now, I'll be well into senior citizen and probably won't be going out into the field and doing those types of things much anymore. And uh, 
You know, this thing will probably still have ample capacity, even at 60-70% capacity of those batteries. You're still talking, you know, six to 800 watts worth of power that this thing would be holding. But either way, oh, I forgot. I've got to pop open this again and go back and put the black silicone over these holes to close off the venting. I don't need it with sealed lead acid. Um, or I don't need the holes. They're really primarily for sealed lead acid. You know, LifePo batteries don't really have that issue with needing heavy amounts of ventilation and that. And having the holes in the side will already give that. But uh, either way, I'll go back and do that off camera and just waterproof this up a bit more so it's even more usable when I'm out in the field. But I'll wrap it up. I know I'll just endlessly ramble. And if you enjoy this type of content, please like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching, yeah? Cheers.